The Summer Bridge Program presents a chance to meet a man who was wrongfully accused and spent over 30 years of his life awaiting his death. Appearing alongside him will be the woman who spent over a decade of her life working to prove his innocence and pry him from death row. Greenwood, South Carolina, January 1982. This quiet community was shocked by the gruesome murder of Dorothy Eli Edwards. Investigators moved swiftly and arrested 23-year-old Edward Lee Elmore. The trial began in April 1982, and a few weeks later, with little circumstantial evidence, Edward Lee Elmore was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Elmore maintained his innocence for years until his case caught the attention of attorney Diana Holt. Holt's fight for Elmore's justice inspired the nonfiction narrative Anatomy of Injustice. The Anatomy of Injustice was written by Raymond Bonner, who was a New York Times writer as well as a Pulitzer Prize winner. In his early years after graduating from Stanford Law School, Bonner joined the U.S. Marines where he retired in 1971 and began working in attorney Ralph Nader's Public Citizen Litigation Group. Bonner became a writer for the New York Times in 1988, where he and a colleague were assigned to investigate the death penalty and came about Elmore's case. Jimmy Holloway was Dorothy Edwards' neighbor and friend, as well as a person who found her body. He was also the person who gave the authorities Elmore's name, which led to Elmore's arrest. William Jones was one of the prosecutors for Elmore's first case and a huge figure within the community. Towns Jones was the son of William Jones and also a prosecutor for Elmore's second case in 1984. Two days after Dorothy Eli Edwards was found murdered in her home on January 18, 1982, Edward Lee Elmore was arrested. Prosecutor William Jones moved quickly and the trial was set for April 1982 in Greenwood County. The trial only lasted a week where Elmore was found guilty and sentenced to death. Elmore had two more trials, one in 1984 and another in 1987, where Elmore was still found guilty and remained on death row. Diana Holt, along with a team of defense attorneys, fought Elmore's case throughout the 1990s. A break in Elmore's case came in 2009 when a judge found Elmore's death penalty sentence un unconstitutional since Elmore was found intellectually disabled. Three years later in 2012, Edward Lee Elmore was released from prison after more than 30 years. The evidence from the beginning was questionable. Only one fingerprint from Elmore was found at the scene. Hair samples were collected from Ms. Edwards' bot bed that were believed to be Elmore's. Decades later, Holt had the hairs sent out for reanalysis only to discover that none of the hairs were a match. The most incriminating piece of evidence in Elmore's first trial was his shirt with Miss Edwards' blood on it. However, that piece of evidence turned out to be non-existent. Elmore is a semi-literate man who was wrongfully accused of murder and sentenced to execution. Young Elmore and his sisters were raised by his mother. Elmore was not from a financially stable family and only had up to a fifth grade education. Because he was considered illiterate, Elmore had learned how to do handiwork, which became his source of income, and it was this type of work that led him to the home of Do Dorothy Edwards. Elmore is alive and well today and resides with his sisters and mother in Greenwood, South Carolina. Diana Holt was Elmore's appellate attorney and the one who eventually had him freed from death row. Diana Holt did not have a privileged childhood. An abusive stepfather turned her to drugs and alcohol that led to an arrest and imprisonment. Holt had several failed marriages, including a case of domestic abuse. After this, Holt gained interest in the justice system. Holt put herself through college while raising her children and eventually got accepted into law school. There, she began fighting death penalty cases. Holt's childhood and adolescence helped stir her passion to fight the death penalty. As of now, Holt has won seven death penalty cases, including Elmore's, and only lost one. <laughs>